gotta kill this deer. <laughs> Just wait now. His name is Crook. <laughs> Again. We just bought our new place. We've done a ton of work down here to get some food plots in. I don't even have words, dude. He's an absolute giant, dude. Please bring him back over here. <laughs> I am on my first owned piece of property in Iowa. That's the deer I've been after all season. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of Loophole's Dream Season Live. This week we're joining Bryce Meese in southern Iowa. He's hunting a deer he calls Crook, an absolute giant Iowa whitetail with a drop tine. And uh, he's been hunting this deer all fall. It's an absolute awesome story, one we can't wait to share with you guys. Bryce has put in a lot of time and effort into this small piece. This deer is showing up right behind his house, basically in his backyard. It's just something that doesn't happen very often. The rest of the team has been hard at it. We've got some great stories to bring you later on from Southern Illinois and Northern Missouri. But right now we're gonna join Bryce Meese in Southern Iowa as he's hunting an absolute giant deer called Crook. We hope you enjoy this episode of Blue Pole's Dream Season Live. I'm Bryce Meese. And I'm Ellie Meese and we're new to the DOD team. This year we started working for the juries. I work in the Iowa studio doing editing with Deer Season Live and a little bit of filming and then I help with the social media platforms. We are super excited to join the team this year. And we just bought our first acreage in Southern Iowa. We're so pumped. This is something we've dreamed of for five plus years ever since we moved here. Yeah, it took a lot of dreaming, but we finally made it work. And like Ellie said, we're so excited. And the cool thing with Iowa is that you don't need a ton of ground to potentially pull good deer or have deer on your ground. So this year we're gonna put in two food plots and hopes of maybe pulling a mature deer or maybe even a big deer. That's the thing with this state. You just never know what might come strolling through. So It's going to so. be a fun year, that's for sure. Today we're going to do a little bit of burning and uh, we're super excited. Got Colin spraying down the outer edge. We're going to start in the corner, do our back burn and hopefully there's a lot of thatch back here so it should burn pretty good. Couldn't be happier with the way it turned out. Could have asked for anything better. Now we just need some rain in the forecast. Yeah, next time you see us, we'll probably be uh, spreading some seeds. done a little work so far and we're just praying for some rain in hopes of getting these fall plots started here on the home place so all right well it's the 9th of october and i couldn't be any happier it's the first set of the year for me and i couldn't be more excited we just bought our new place we've done a ton of work down here to get some food plots in and they're coming up and they're looking good but what's better than that is that we've got an absolute hammer, probably one of the bigger bucks I've ever had photos of, coming here and actually frequently eating this green. Now it might not look like a lot, but it's enough. And he's been coming about every day or every other day. So I couldn't be more excited. We're on a small piece behind the house. And it's always been a goal and a dream of mine to be able to hunt my own place. And, down here in southern Iowa, I honestly don't believe it gets any better, so we just gotta play as smart as we can with this guy. Alright, well it's October the 13th, cold front's moving in, and the wind's howling. We're hoping we can at least get eyes on him, we'll see what happens. We're still in here after the same big deer, and he's been showing up pretty consistent, but all nighttime photos so we are just trying to beat him to his daylight if that makes sense. Oh yeah. Look at him. We are 
going to set up on a stand that I just hung and prepared here this afternoon and it's in a perfect spot on the other side of the creek where we've been getting a lot more photos of this buck so we finally got a name for him his name is Crook and uh, he's been doing a lot of nighttime activities in the backyard here so we thought Crook was pretty fitting and we're just praying for him to daylight last night he was at 734 so we're hoping if we punch in a little bit further and he does the same thing as last night, we'll hopefully be able to get eyes on him, if not get a shot at him tonight. So let's go give it a shot. All right, well, it's October 29th. We're gonna go after Crook tonight. He just hit the camera this morning at about 6.50, so he should be bedded close. Hopefully we get eyes on him. We're gonna get in there and see what we see. I feel like I'm missing something. Well, Carson and I finally just got settled and we had a photo of Crook at 6.50 this morning and he actually daylighted in this back plot at about 6.30 last night. So hopefully he decides to do the same thing tonight. I think we're, we've been close this whole time, but I think we're, we're on him now and he should be bedded probably the closest. So well, Crook's been the only deer that I've been after all year. We've been sitting for him for multiple times now. We just haven't laid eyes on him. We had one heck of an evening last night. Carson killed his biggest buck to date. That was, honest to God, one of the coolest hunts I've ever been on. And just the way he came running into that snort breeze was unreal. So, unbelievable night last night. And the weather's pretty similar today. So, let's see if we can't have a repeat October 29th. Our hopes are high and hopefully Crook decides to step out tonight. This episode of DRD TV is brought to you by HHA Sports, leading the industry in single pin technology for the past 14 years. Range, dial, shoot.
All right, well, it's October 30th. Last night, Carson and I had an unbelievable sit, probably five different bucks, and one being Crook. We finally got our eyes on him. He's no longer a ghost. He actually exists, so we're so fired up for today, and he was all over the cameras last night, so let's go give her a whirl. Starting to wear me out. We're once again in the back plot here on the home place after Crook. Biggest deer I've ever seen with bow in my hand. Any day now, they'll be finding their first doe in estrus, so fingers crossed. On November 1st, Arson and I are going out to Crook again. It's uh, the only buck I've had my eyes on this year. All right, well, it's November 2nd, and I'm in here after Crook again this morning. All right, well, it's November 9th. We are back in here after Crook once again. Same back plot. Carson showed up about 5.45 this morning, and we are gonna go give Crook another shot, Perry and I. Had an awesome sit down there last night. We still don't know which stand we're gonna sit. We're gonna have Ellie back out of the driveway as we go walk down there. So, <laughs> see if we can't see Crook or any mature deer at this point, we're getting to that stage. So, let's go give it a whirl. Let's do this.
I don't even have words, dude. That's the deer I've been after all season. And he's been a little MIA since the rut, but to be expected. It's the biggest deer I've ever went to full draw my entire life. In a food plot we did all the work in. Like I couldn't have dreamt that up anymore. Like I've got, I'm shaking so bad, like I killed the dang thing. Almost, I, I almost snuck one through there. Would have been risky. He was dead. He was dead. I needed two steps. Well, there you have it, the encounter with Crook. It was one that we have been long waiting for. We've been hunting all season and we finally had him at 30 yards. But unfortunately, as luck would have it, where Carson was at versus where I was at on the tree, I had part of the cottonwood and a few sticks in my way where I didn't want to take that risk and ruin potentially wounding him. So I, I knew with the deer of that caliber and the, the small parcel we're on that the encounters that we are going to have with him were going to be very few and far between, if at all, in daylight. With the way Crook was nighttime, 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 we were trying to hunt every single day that was best. We were in the office editing nonstop, always checking the weather, checking deer cast, and only going out on the days that were good or great. So the next three days we hunted super hard, morning and evening. We're like, all right, we're not giving up. He's in the area. Sure enough, we hunted hard those three days and unfortunately no sign of crook. So there's a few other deer on this property that we are considered taking and we're gonna head to the tree stand here in the morning of November 18th. Well, here it is November the 18th. It is the morning and Carson and I are gonna go give crook another shot. We're really fired up today. It's super cold out. It's gonna be upper 20s, lower 30s this morning. It's gonna be really crisp, I think. What Mark says, deer are gonna lay low with this frost, and then once that sun starts to come up, I think uh, a lot of deer are gonna start moving this morning. So we're gonna get the decoy set out and get up in the tree. As Darren promised, I put gloves on. Mama.
It's not crooked, but I don't care. <laughs> I am on my first owned piece of property in Iowa. <laughs> it's a five-year-old deer at least. We call him Shrek. He's been around, and I have hunted my butt off this year. Mornings, editing, all of this. All the hard work, the food plots, <laughs> and Shrek is like, I would say my number two on this piece, and about four or five does came in, and that doe came running through, and I seen him coming, <laughs> I'm like, sorry, I gotta kill this deer. <laughs> I don't know, it's been quite the humbling experience, got a lot of people to thank that have helped with the food plots, the stands, and filming and uh, it's you just can't thank everyone but what a surreal moment and what a beautiful moment right now the sun's coming up like <laughs> he's dead no blood trailing like thank you lord there it is right through here <laughs> dude Oh my goodness, pumping. There he is. <laughs> oh my gosh. First things first, let's wrap our tag around me. <laughs> Oh man, gotta love it. We've been waiting for this moment all year, Carson. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> What a cool deer. Look at that. We are in the brambles here right now. But what an absolute tank of a body on this deer. <laughs> we'll get him out here propped up a little better where we can get a better look at him. And oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. We both earned him, dude. Look at that. All right, here we go. This is a deer that we call Shrek, and I would just like to uh, back up a little bit and go back to this summer when Ellie and I purchased our first home. We knew it was in a good area for whitetails. We didn't know how good it was going to be. We're just shy of six acres here. Put in a ton of work this year. We've done food plots. We've done burning. We've done scrape trees. We've done it all, and there's so many people that have helped me with this, and I, I couldn't be more proud and happy to be sitting behind this buck. We um, had photos of this deer, I think about the middle of October, and sure enough, he uh, was kind of sporadic and mostly at nighttime, and then two mornings ago, the same time that Crook decided to daylight, he decided to daylight at 7.30, so. He was always one that was on my radar, number two, if you will. And this morning was just 
absolutely beautiful. He uh, chased a couple does into the finger right next to us and sure enough one of those does broke off and came running in at 20 yards right through my shooting lane and he was trucking right behind her and about 23 yards shot was a little high but I do apologize for the, the little bit of a high shot but he didn't go far and we got to watch him fall down at 70 yards. <laughs> I can't believe it. I want to thank everybody on the Drury team that makes things like this possible and a huge shout out to Carson for riding it out with me. He's been filming me almost every single hunt of this season. I think this is like sit number 16 so couldn't be any happier to get it done on the home farm in southern Iowa. Dreams are coming true. Well what an incredible story that was with the chase for Crook all season and then being able to film Bryce take Shrek right there, 100 yards behind his house. Just a great ending to an incredible season. But now I want to take a second and talk about the Rogue Ridge RG750 I got here today. It's second gun season here in Iowa. I'm going to go out and pull some SD cards, change some cameras, move some cameras around to food going into late season. This is my second year using this bike. I absolutely love this thing. It makes it awesome to go and run trail cameras. Having permission farms in different locations, it makes it really nice being able to throw this in the back of the truck, go from one farm to another really quick and really efficiently. In a lot of these permission farms, I'm not able to drive a pickup or a four-wheeler on, but this bike would be a great alternative to that, and it doesn't track anything up. It takes two and a half hours for this bike to go from 0% battery life to 100% battery life. That's very quick, it goes 30 miles on a single charge, and my favorite thing about it is it plugs in with a standard wall plug-in. That's super convenient for whether you're keeping it in the shop, in the garage, or wherever you may have it. If anyone's looking for a new bike, I would highly recommend the RG750. There's lots of different makes and models out there for this bike. It comes in Mossy Oak Bottomland or the tan that you see here. I absolutely love this thing. Could not say enough good things about it, but go to roguridge.com and check them out if you're interested in looking at a bike. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode, and huge congrats to Bryce on that giant Iowa whitetail. Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. The transition that we have been seeing with the deer as of late is away from the rut and back to food sources. We're hoping that this puts a deer named Five Head Son back on a huntable pattern and either I can get it done with my archery tag or dad can get it done with his rifle tag in late season. The team has been putting in some serious sits in late November and early December and man has it paid off. Next week we'll be with Vernon Quant in Illinois and Christian Cherry with us here in Missouri as some beautiful bucks hit the ground. If you're in the woods this week hunting, best of luck to you. And as always, thank you guys for watching another episode of Loophole's Dream Season Live. Sub four pounds, eight feet per second faster. Our goal wasn't just light and fast. It was how light and how fast. We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DOD TV is brought to you by DeerCast, the most advanced deer movement predictor ever.